What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here and I've got 10 brand new Cydia tweaks I'd like to share with you guys. Now that my video schedule has cleared up, I thought I'd make another one of these. Now guys, we are really living in the last times of the jailbreak. This is extinction, this is survival mode. So I want you guys to take extra care of your jailbreaks. Do not update to iOS 8.4.1 because that version will no longer be able to be jailbroken and that version is likely the last version of iOS 8 until iOS 9. iOS 9, as we know, is now rootless so we we might not be able to see a jailbreak on it for a very long time, if at all. So be very careful with your jailbreaks, guys. Treasure them. I don't know, who knows? Maybe we won't ever see another one in the future, but hopefully that's not true. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the latest and greatest 10 city of tweaks. Of course, you guys do need to be jailbroken. So if you're on iOS 8.4.1, you cannot jailbreak any longer, but the good news is you can downgrade and I'll put that video up there. If you're on 8.4, you wanna jailbreak using those videos right there. It's a very simple process to downgrade if you are on 8.4. And as this video will show you, it's certainly worth it to jailbreak as you can do so many great things with your device. Of course, you guys will need the full tweak list and there are a few custom sources for some of these tweaks. So you can go ahead and get that right there. The wallpaper I'm using, of course, this is the iOS 9 one. I'll have a link for all of them down there as well. And pretty much just everything you need to know for this video as well as some bonus tweaks. So let's go ahead and get started. So you guys remember OXO 3, right? Well, it no longer works on iOS 8.4 and the developer has really no interest in recreating it for 8.4. Well, there's a great alternative and it's called Sang. So what Sang is, is it's basically a cloned copy of OXO 3 and it actually builds off of it. So it combines your control center and your multitasking pane into one great view like this that's extremely customizable. So you can activate it by both double clicking or just sliding up into your control center. As you can see, it saves a lot of space. This is something Apple should really think about implementing. Why have two separate systems when you can create one great one just like this? So as you guys can see, this is all customizable. You can either decide what to put up here. If you don't want AirDrop up here, you can place it down here. You can really change around the controls and see what you like. Not only that, but it combines a couple other tweaks into one. So you now have a whole bunch of toggles right here. You could slide them. It's just all around a very well-built tweak. Now in the settings, you guys have a couple easy options. In the top, you can choose what you want to place there. Let's say I want to place my favorite contacts like they were before. So I'm going to place them underneath AirDrop. Now when you slide up, you have your recent contacts or favorites right there. Really neat. And the same for the bottom view as well. So in here, uh, let's say you want to put the volume slider underneath as well. So now you have it right here. Really cool. You can customize it and this view will shrink depending on how many things you like. And there are a couple shortcuts with this app as well. If you slide on the very right very fast, it closes the current application you're in. If you slide on the left, it'll bring up this view and you can easily go through apps, just slide through them real quick. It's basically a clone copy of OXO 3, but it works so smoothly. It's still technically in beta, but it works great. Up next, here are nude keys. I know it sounds interesting, but this is such a beautiful city of tweak. Let me show you how it works. So pretty much it replaces your entire keyboard with a color palette that really reminds me of the 80s. And it, depending on which colors you set, of course, you'll get a different effect, but it replaces the entire look of your keyboard with a custom color that you set. And it's beautiful, it's absolutely gorgeous. And there are many settings you can choose inside of it. So you choose a top color and then a bottom color. So it looks just like this. You just select a top color in here, say I want something a little bit different. You can add a hex value as well, but you know, you could set one like this, a little bit of a teal color and a bottom color. Uh, let's say I want black. So you do need to respring for it to take effect, but it's really cool how it filters that color down and you get such a beautiful color palette on your keyboard. So as you guys can see, now there's this beautiful effect right here. No matter which combination you do, it looks fantastic. I like how it filters down slowly. Really cool, would really recommend this one. Make your keyboard look much, much more beautiful with nude keys. Now here's a really cool one. It's called Browsex. At least I think that's how you say it. It's a very mini Safari browser from any location on your device. Say you're using your awesome new nude keys keyboard and someone sends you a link. Well, you can actually just click on that link and it'll open a very mini Safari browser right here. You can go ahead and do your thing, check it out and close it right here. It's pretty much just a very fast way to browse the internet no matter what you're doing. And you can actually set an activator gesture for it. So double click right here, mine set to a double tap on the status bar and it'll go ahead and open up a little mini Safari browser. Now you can move it around just like this. So you can continue what you were doing in the 
the background while browsing the internet up here. I think this is fantastic and it works so well. It's very smooth. Now, if you guys want to open up the link in Safari, all you guys need to do is click this and select open in Safari. And they can copy it and share it as well. Overall, this is amazing. It saves you a lot of time. No matter what you're doing, you can be opening this up, you know, do your thing real quick on the internet and go back to what you were doing without having to exit, go to Safari and load it. So it'll save you a little bit of time. It's very convenient. There's also a light mode for it and you can choose how this thing works, the activation methods in here. Really cool. Now, let me show you a great city of tweak for your messages application. It's called Convos. Convos is pretty much an all-in-one city of tweak for your messaging application. Let me just show you some of the things that it can do. For one, you can slide on conversations and mark them unread or read just like that. You can actually add custom timestamps to your device. So instead of saying the certain time that your message was received, you can actually make it say how long ago that message was. So instead of 747 yesterday, it could be one day ago or something like that. You can make this underlined link disappear. So you can just have the words in blue or not in blue at all. You can make it so links don't open if you so choose. You can choose to make the separation between messages larger or smaller, pretty much just an all around tweaking application for messages. And I'm just barely scratching the surface here. There's a lot of settings that you can do inside of it. You can sort everything alphabetically, your conversations instead of by a time. So now everything would pretty much be sorted alphabetically. So precise timestamps naturally tells you how long ago it was not the exact time. You know, there's a lot of settings in here. Pretty much just tweak your messages application to your exact liking. And there is so much you can do in here, especially with colors. And uh, there's a lot, guys. Definitely check it out. It's called Convos. Now here's Video Pane 2.0. This is actually still in beta, but it's been updated for 8.4 and it works great. So first off, find a video you guys want to go ahead and watch and it'll ask if you want to detach that video. So now you have this right here and you can actually shrink it and move it around and it works flawlessly on iOS 8.4. You know, continue what you were doing while watching video on your device. And this is anything new, but it's been updated with some new features. So this newest version actually works with YouTube and this little rocket will pretty much take you to where the source of video is at. Now that's cool that there's a new option for that. You can actually full screen it just like this. So it has some nice new features in it that the last version didn't have and it works very great. I would absolutely recommend it. So uh, definitely check it out. It does require a custom source, but this is pretty much the feature on iOS 9 that's exclusive to iPads. As you can see, it's working perfectly on my iPhone 6. It's definitely nice to have. And the latest version works with all third-party applications. So here's GIF Paper 8. It'll pretty much allow you to set a GIF dot GIF format photo as your background on your device. So as you can see, I have this one set right here and it pretty much just loops it over and over. But if you get the right one, it will look great. And there's plenty to choose from. Now there's two ways to get a GIF working on your device, you guys can actually go in here and put the link into where it's located, or you can actually set a GIF from the photos. So there's a couple ways to do it, but it's very simple. Also, you guys can go ahead and scale it how you like. If it's a very small one, you can enhance it, make it larger to fit the display. There's actually a way to find good ones in here. And with this right here, it's really cool. So really cool, guys. There's a lot you can do with this. So I've got this one. It's really trippy. Of course, this will probably eat up a little bit more battery life, but it looks great. It's probably worth it. I really like it. Now, here's a really interesting city of tweak. With this one, I actually learned something new. It's called Front Cam on Mirror. So I didn't know this before, but iPhones actually mirror your front-facing camera. So when you're taking selfies, we're so used to seeing ourselves in the mirror. It actually mirrors the image. So it looks like we're looking at ourselves in the mirror, which uh, is natural, but if you guys want to unmirror your photo when you're in the front facing camera, click on this unmirror button right here and it'll unmirror the image. And it's so strange looking at yourself like this instead of like the normal way. It was really interesting for me to find that out, but pretty much unmirror your camera, make it how it is naturally. The iPhone actually mirrors it, so it's more natural to us looking, but it's really interesting, guys. Just download it and try it out. It is so trippy. Uh, try taking some pictures of yourself like that. You'll you'll be really confused. So for this next one, I bet you guys are really gonna like this one. Apple decided to remove something important from 8.4 for whatever reason. I don't know why they would do it, but in the music application on the bottom, it used to say how many songs you had. Well, with song count, it brings back this functionality. You can now see how many songs you have in your music application just by scrolling all the way down to the bottom and song count reintroduces that functionality right there. Really cool. For some reason, Apple decided to remove that useful feature and now it's great to have it back using song count. So here's a couple lock screen tweaks that I really liked. First one is called Epicenter. It's pretty much like a rotary replacement lock screen for your device. And you can either slide them down just like this and it's a little time consuming or just tap them and you can use that to unlock your device. Of course, you can still use Touch ID, but it looks really neat and you can customize how big or small this is. You can make it really, really tiny. I like it just like this. 
and there's a couple settings inside that will actually make it safer than your standard lock screen. So first off, you can scramble the number of positions. With this setting, all of the numbers get put into different places, but they still work as they usually would. So my password is four zeros. Now, if you use this button right here, use button location, it'll scramble all of the numbers, but the numbers are still set in their original position. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Pretty much, it can look confusing. It's to throw people off that could potentially take your phone. So this is still a zero. Even though it says nine, it's still a zero and it'll unlock my device with that. I personally don't like it because it can be kind of confusing. What if you forget your password, whatever. But pretty much scramble number positions is as far as I'm willing to go. And it's really cool. It can make your device safer while adding a really cool interface to the lock. And here's the second lock screen tweak I wanted to show you guys. It looks a little bit interesting, doesn't it? It's called Instacode. And what it does is it combines both lock screen screens into one. So here you have your passcode screen and your uh, time view screen so it's all combined there you can longer slide it it's just one image you can click the emergency button to go to emergency but otherwise it's all been combined and I think it's efficient it works it looks cool of course it still works with touch ID but there's some settings that I like about this tweak that makes it perfect in here you can actually choose what you want to remove from the device you can actually hide the slide to unlock which I think interferes you can hide certain aspects of the lock screen so clean it up make it look great it basically minimizes the lock screen and I think it looks cool. It's unique, something different. So guys, that's just about it. Those are the next top 10 Cydia tweaks. I'm gonna keep making these videos even though there is not a current jailbreak for 8.4.1. I know a lot of people do like these videos, so I'm gonna keep uploading them. Now, unfortunately, 8.4.1 and beyond will not be able to be jailbroken for an indefinite amount of time. We really don't know when the next jailbreak is coming, so I urge you guys to stay on 8.4. Don't update. If you do downgrade right away because it's dangerous, there might not be a jailbreak for the longest time guys we're in survival mode so this is serious uh, i really urge you guys not to update now as far as ios 9 goes i'm going to keep you guys updated on any news on a jailbreak for that the keen jailbreak team of course is still doing their thing uh, they're the ones that are planning to jailbreak it and whoever does jailbreak it, it's going to be crazy the whole rootless system i don't know i really don't know what to think let's see what happens but otherwise guys hope you enjoy this video thanks for watching enjoy these city tweaks and have a great day peace